Hi, and welcome to my video. What you see before you is a KFUN 3.1 rebuildable atomizer uh, sitting on top of my EFRO EA clone mod. And although this video is going to be discussing the KFUN 3.1 clone, I just wanted to let you know that the EPRO, which is E P H R O E A clone mod, is a, a rock solid mod. If you're if you're looking for for one mod to purchase that'll rest you for the rest of your life, that one's it. It's it's literally uh, built like a tank, and um, I've I've been very very pleased with it. Um, let me go ahead and disconnect this. What what we're going to be discussing today is the the clone of the Sfomesto um, KFUN uh, 3.1. Now, there's several companies on the market that are that are producing this this clone. And I'm not going to state the manufacturer of this one because basically everything that we're going to be covering in this video is something that any vapor that's that's purchasing this particular atomizer should look at no matter who they're purchasing it from or or who the actual manufacturer was. So I'm just going to give you, I'm, I'm basically going to do a, a little bit of a review on it. We're going to do a rebuild uh, on it and I'm going to give you my recommendations as far as a rebuild um, and I'm going to go over some of the stuff that that I've noticed on some of these clones coming out of China and it's it's stuff that you really need to look at um, in order to keep yourself safe and in order to uh, make sure that you have a, a good functioning device uh, first off the bat I mean when I look at these type uh, atomizers and if you look at most of the the ads uh, like say on eBay or or if you go to any of the vaping websites these type of atomizers are always going to have a uh, little note at the bottom of the ad that says these are these are for uh, more advanced uh, users you know this this isn't something that a newbie should go out and purchase and and just start using right off the bat unless you're uh, confident enough in in learning what you need to do in order to use these things now all of that being said I'm will say this this particular atomizer is now my uh, personal favorite um, as far as a rebuildable uh, tank atomizer goes, I, I can honestly say that that um, I've been extremely happy with mine. I I've had a couple leaks, but nothing too major. Um, the uh, if if you're not careful, every once in a while you'll get a little bit of gurgling, and and basically all you need to do is grab a paper towel stick underneath it and just let gravity take the excess liquid out you don't want to try blowing through it or anything like that there's really no no need for it I mean you, you turn it upside down for about a minute or two and just let it drain into a paper towel and, and you'll be good to go now I want to explain this particular uh, clone a little bit um, once you get into the um, vaping world a little bit more and you, you start seeing these clones, you're going to see things that are called one-to-one -one clones. Now, the particular manufacturer of this clone didn't do a one-to-one -one build. I mean, if you take this one apart and inspect it, it's not exactly like the original uh, K-Fun. And one of the things right off the bat that, that will tell you that is that the fill port here utilizes a screw 
uh, versus having a spring-loaded um, valve that you would take a um, a little needle tipped bottle which on the originals that have the actual valve there you wouldn't want to use a metal tip like this you'd use a, a plastic tip to, to protect the valve uh, but one, one of the things that that drew me to this particular clone and choosing it for myself is I, I really didn't want the hassle of of uh, having a little fill valve down there that I'd have to worry about eventually down the road uh, starting to leak on me. I like the idea of this one having a, a screw and that that's one of the things that sort of drew me to this. Now one thing I will say is this this uh, screw here it has leaked on me a little bit and it's it's not much after about three days you'll see about like a drop of of juice here in that in that little well and I'll just take a paper towel and stick in there and and get it out but what I, since I don't use this uh, to fill my tank what I might do is just get a little dab of, of JB weld to put put around the threads of that screw screw it in and just let it um, seal itself off and I, I shouldn't have any more issues out of that um, I use the the fill method uh, by taking the top off and and if you look here on the on the clone of course you have your little fill port uh, with the screw for filling where my thumb is and then you have the actual air hole there where my thumb is and then right there you have another screw and what that screws for is for um, um, adjusting the airflow here out of this hole and if you like a tighter draw what you'll do is you'll just turn that screw counterclockwise and it'll push the screw in and it'll block off that port to where you're you're getting a little bit of a tighter draw now recently um, I've been um, vaping a cappuccino flavored um, e-liquid and and basically I, I I really like an open draw with that particular liquid it just not only do I get the flavor but it just helps the aroma so what I do and it, it works fine is I just I totally um, take the screw out of mine I don't even leave the screw in there and basically it, it leaves the airflow uh, wide open as, as you can see let me get this out here um, you'll see the screw right there that was actually in in this part of the the atomizer so I'll just set that to the side and uh, like I said like this it's gonna be fully open you're not you're not gonna have to to worry about adjusting the air screw or anything like that um, one thing I have noticed on these is that the air adjustment screw even when it's in there it seems a little loose so if I do change my flavors and I go back to one to where I'm I'm uh, one a little bit tighter draw probably what I'll do is put a wrap or two of Teflon tape around that that screw and then screw it in like that and it should uh, tighten it up a bit to where you know I'm not worried about it jiggling around and and falling out okay so starting from there I'm just going to show you real quick how I would normally fill this um, and this is the the recommended uh, method now I, I never take my drip tip off I basically always leave it uh, here on the top cap and I'll unscrew the top cap and then the instead of having one airflow hole now now I have two since I took the screw out so I'll put my finger to where I'm sealing off those two holes and then I will fill my tank and when I say fill it I'm gonna let it fill from the bottom 
all the way up to where this this uh, the clear part of the uh, tank disappears and then this chrome part takes over the reason I do that is because I don't want to overfill this thing because if you do that's where you end up having your gurgling and your leaking issues and stuff like that and the reason why is because well I'll, I'll tell you that in a second let me let me just say so I, I just fill up to to about right there maybe a little bit higher than the the glass portion and then I will take this and if you look in here there's a uh, there's a little Delrin um, o-ring right there and when you go to put it on you're gonna feel the the that Delrin o-ring right when it starts touching the chimney which is this piece here right right when you feel it hit the chimney just barely you go ahead and flip this thing over and screw it in the rest of the way okay now you, your fluids gonna come down here into this area here and what that prevents is the these type of atomizers work on pressure differential okay so if you can imagine like a piston in a car if you didn't have these holes covered with your finger and you had your liquid here and you went to start screwing this in okay it would act like a piston in a car or in a pump and it would you know you're you're going to be screwing this in and it would be building up pressure here which would push the fluid up into your into your deck area which would um, end up giving giving you flooding issues and uh, quite possibly could send the liquid out here and and you don't want that so uh, that's why you know once you get your liquid in here and you have your fingers covering the holes um, and once that thing once you get it to where it's touching that chimney you just flip it over and finish screwing it in and that's that's that um, there's several videos on YouTube of, of people um, showing that method of, of, of filling these things and that that's that's actually what I prefer and once you once you start doing it like that it's a it's a no-brainer man it's just it's it's a lot easier than tracking down a your screwdriver that comes with it and you know taking this little screw out and trying to flip it over and fill with a bottle I mean it's it's much easier doing doing the top method and and um, I've had you know zero issues with it unless I I um, you know overfilled if I if I the first couple of times that I've I've came up you know halfway on this area with liquid uh, that's where when I would turn it over you know I'd have leaking around this area and then I'd after about a minute or so when I flip it back over then I'd uh, you know try to take a couple vapes and I'd, I'd have a little gurgling in there so as long as you keep it to about right here I mean you, you you'll be all right in that that respect okay this uh, will in part one of this video I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop here and then I'm gonna come back and I will take this thing apart discuss some of the issues that I found with them and what you need to look for when you're uh, getting your your new um, 3.1 uh, K fund clones in and and um, basically just what what to look for so stand by